We're very fortunate to be able to hear from Michael Bischoff. I wanted to share the gift that he is to me as a pastor with you. Uh, he's a pastor to pastors, and he has a lot of things to help us walk through this unique time in history. So you are blessed. Branches Church, it's so good to be with you. I've missed you guys so much. You are one of my favorite groups of people to hang out with. When Boogie asked me to do this series of messages, uh, my heart just rang with joy to be able to at least connect this way. It's not quite the same as being with you and seeing your faces, but uh, at least you get to see mine and we get to hang out this way together. So boy, I sure hope you're doing well. Um, this has been a crazy, crazy year for all of us, hasn't it? Um, nothing like this has taken place in our lifetimes. And uh, yeah, so when Boog asked me to speak, I was thinking what could be most helpful for all of us to journey through together? And I've been spending a number of months, almost six months now, helping pastors, helping churches think through what it is that they need to address and how are we going to make it through this. And the hard part is we can't even see around the next turn. So we don't even know what's coming. So the series that came to my mind was uh, questions I'm afraid to ask because many of us have so many questions that are running through our mind and uh, some of them feel like they're a little out of bounds to ask, especially questions related to God and why God would allow this to happen and things like that. So I came out with just a few questions here that we're gonna look at for these three weeks and I'm glad we're gonna be able to do it together. Um, before we jump into them though, um, I was just doing some scanning of the internet and came across some funny, humorous things about what 2020 has been like. We need to laugh together, don't we? And so a few things here. Someone asked the question, if 2020 was a drink, what would it be? And the answer, a colonoscopy prep. So uh, some of you are old enough to know what that's like. In fact, I just had one a couple weeks ago and to know what it's like to drink that drink. Others of you are going, yeah, not, not yet, but anyway. That was a joke for the older folks that are in our room. Uh, if 2020 was a bag of chips, what would it be? It would be the orange juice and toothpaste flavored chips. Um, can you just feel that in your mouth and your gums? And yeah, just not a good thing. If 2020 was a boat, maybe it would be like this boat. No worries as it sinks into the ocean. If 2020 was a chord, this is for all you worship leaders and musicians out there, it would be a chord that looks something like, yeah, like, like this one. If 2020 was a slide, yeah, the, the, the picture speaks for itself, doesn't it? Just dropping off the edge. If 2020 was an avocado, I love this one because I have an avocado tree at home and there's only one avocado hanging on it now. But yeah, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if I open it up and it's just like this, all pit. That's all you got there for you avocado lovers out there and this one this last one is maybe my favorite and some of you again are old enough to know what this was like if 2020 was a car it would be a ford pinto yeah the the original exploding car there and um yeah some of you are smiling about that some of you are going what's a ford pinto never seen one of those but it's just been a hard and crazy year um some have even said uh, to use a word that comes from the uh, area of anthropology, that we are in the midst of a liminal space like we have never lived in before. This concept of liminality, or it comes from the word for threshold, is that when you're moving from one era or one time frame to something else, there's this space in the middle. And this threshold that we have to walk over is challenging. This is probably the biggest liminal time we have ever walked through. And for some of you, that might explain uh, some of the things that you're feeling and, and thinking about and wondering why this is such a challenging time to, to live through. And so, um, yeah, give yourself permission to feel these things. Give yourself permission to ask questions. I think some of the things sometimes in churches that makes me a little bit fearful is when people don't feel safe to ask questions. And I just want to say, no, these, this is a good thing to ask questions, to talk about this. And so we're just going to do this together. In this first week, I want to start off with this question. Where is God? 
where is God? Of all the questions we are afraid to ask, this would be maybe one that would come to the forefront of our minds. Where is God? Um, this came to my thinking right at the beginning of the pandemic when I heard uh, one of my favorite authors, um, a guy named James Martin. Um, he's a Jesuit and he's written a number of books and is a really good author. Um, but he had asked that question and written an article for the New York Times asking the question, where is God? So I was really excited to read that article. And I did read it, but his answer left me cold. After all the things that he said, and normally I really like this author, like I said, he just answered, we don't know. We don't know. And I thought, there's something wrong with that answer. We don't know. There has to be something more to this question of where is God, right? But most of us are in a place like when we get sick, what do you do? Who do you turn to? You, you pray, right? Or you ask other people to pray for you. Now we have the whole world getting sick or with the potential of being sick. And that's sort of what a pandemic is about. I mean, most of us never even use the word pandemic in our vocabulary up until now. And we're used to praying when we get sick, but what do we do now when there's the threat of an entire globe being affected by something like this? We want to pray. And yet maybe the first question that comes to your mind is, where's God? Why would God even allow this to happen? Is God in control? Um, and a lot of times in the church, you, you, we experience quick answers, easy answers that people might want to give us. And honestly, none of those are helpful answers like, yeah, God's in control. Um, God is sovereign. God's on the throne. God's got this. He'll take care of it. And while we know much of that is true, I don't think those easy answers are helpful right now. So I'd encourage you guys to not use those answers in terms of giving those to other people. But if someone uses them with you, that you'll just listen, be kind or whatever. But I think this becomes a theological issue for us. Is God in control? We talk about the sovereignty of God. I think sovereignty of God or, or, or God being referred to as a sovereign is used a couple hundred times in the scripture. So we know that God is sovereign. God rules and reigns over God's kingdom. And I love that thought. But we live on this earth and it does feel a bit like things are out of control. So this, this isn't a message on God's sovereignty and are we going to argue for God's sovereignty or not. I just want to call out the fact that easy answers aren't helpful right now. And when people are asking the question, where is God, that that is really a good good question. Maybe what it comes down to is we ask, is God in control? Because so many of us are control freaks. Can you relate to that? Um, I can relate to that. Uh, I'm a bit of a control freak. If you ask my wife, she'd tell you I'm a lot of a control freak. Our desire for control is way strong. And I think the place we need to move is not so concerned about control, but literally about what does it mean to be a person of compassion? So not control, but compassion. See, that's a different way of looking at this, isn't it? It's a different way of framing it. And I think it's an important thing to understand. Another way to look at this would be to realize God is in everything. So whether or not it feels like God's in control right now and whether or not we can understand or know why God allows something to happen, again, I don't think is the, the, the main way to look at this. I think to understand how God is in everything that God has created is an amazing reality. In fact, I'd encourage you to go and maybe today, spend some time reading Ephesians chapter 1 and Colossians chapter 1, two chapters that help us understand how God is in control, especially through Jesus. In fact, I want to read for you right now Colossians 1, 15 to 20. And so just whenever you're listening to this, just kind of sit back, calm down, put distractions away, and soak this in and get a sense of what it's like to understand how God has set this up. It says in Colossians 1, the sun is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him, all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, 
all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything we, he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Now, there's a lot of stuff packed into that passage, but what it helps me understand is that Jesus is at the center of all of this. And if you want to rest in something very comforting, I find that incredibly comforting. That the way this thing is set up, the way God has set it up, is Jesus is at the center of it. Where is God? God is working through Jesus all the time. We might not be able to see that or understand it, but it's true. I'd, like I said earlier, I'd suggest you spend some time in Ephesians 1, Colossians 1, and just get a sense of how God is is in everything. A couple weeks after I first heard that New York Times article come out uh, that James Martin wrote, and I really didn't like his answer that we don't know where God is, I heard someone else tell a story that really helped. They told me, uh, they told the story about Elie Weitzel. And Elie Weitzel is a Auschwitz concentration camp survivor. And as a young boy, he tells the story about being in the concentration camp at Auschwitz and watching three people being killed. I believe it was two adult males and um, a male teenager on the gallows being murdered by Nazi soldiers. And as a teenager, Elie Weitzel's watching this happen and there were some other Jews that came up behind him and one of the Jews just said, where is God? Where is God? And Elie Weitzel said, just at that moment, I sensed in my spirit the word there. As he looked at those gallows with those three Jews dying, God's there. And I love that story, even though it's horrific, because it helps me understand that even in the midst of so many of the crazy things we faced in 2020, we can say God is there. God is in the midst of someone that gets COVID. God is in the lungs of a patient dying of COVID. God is in the midst of so much of the racial injustice we've seen happening right there, feeling the pain of those who have suffered through it. Whatever the hard things are or the difficulties that, that you've been facing, God is right there. And for me, that was about the best answer that I could come to with this question of where is God? So here's a little assignment this week for you. Um, and that's to think through this question, how might you see God this week in the most God forsaken places? I just shared one example of an incredibly God forsaken place, a concentration camp. Many of us think of the pandemic and what's going on or places of, of rioting and, and demonstration possibly as a God-forsaken place. We could name a number of examples. But how might we see God in that place? It might not be as obvious as you'd want it to be, but I think it's good to pay attention that way. God, help us. Uh, give us eyes to see. Give us ears to hear. Help us to be people that can observe wisely of where you are at, knowing that you are there. You have not left us alone. You are not absent. Even when we can't hear you, we can't see you, we can't feel you all the time. Help us to live with that reality in our hearts and in our minds. In your name we pray, amen.